the 2010s decade will be over in 4 months. What do you think people will remember this decade for? The social media explosion. And the 20s will be the implosion. We're already sick of ourselves. I kind of hope that pinstripe suits and flapper dresses make a comeback. It's going to be a decade of people hosting roaring 20s theme parties. I can live with that. And with any luck I'll be dead by the time we get back to the 70s. We all might be dead if we have to go through the 40s again. Well we, almost, got through the 10s without a Spanish flu epidemic or a world war so there is hope. Fedoras without a suit have been ruined. The hat that people picture, when you say fedora or mladi for that matter, is actually a trilby, which has a very narrow brim. Even when wearing a suit a trilby looks somewhat ridiculous, unless you live somewhere tropical. A proper fedora has a brim that's about 3 inches wide, and should match the suit. Even in those circumstances the cut of the suit matters. English cut, tight fit and typically two button, suits are in style, and tend not to look good with a hat at all. There is some hope for proper hats in general though. The ascot cap has been acceptable casual wear for a few years now, especially in the fall and winter. This has been great for guys who hate baseball caps, but also don't have a waifu slash don't study the blade. True, but whipping out your Tommy gun in a dark alley just doesn't look right without one. The rise of the smartphone. Everyone has access to the internet, and can voice their opinion towards the world at any moment with all the negative effects that it brings. IMHO, this is the biggest one. The iPhone came out in what? 2007? It was a solid year or two before you had traction there. Now, phones have pretty much replaced most people's home computers for menial tasks. I'll tell you this. 2012 was the year the majority of the internet users were on phones, and not laptops or desktops, so the 2010s is definition the year where the smartphones changed everything. Suddenly kids and old people and tech illiterate people came to the internet and it's changed everything. I don't like this realization. The 90s are soon 30 years ago. Just think, 30 years before the 90s was the 60s. Yup. Nirvana's Nevermind album was released closer in time to the first moon landing than to today. Edit. Wow. I go pick up the kids from school, and come back to Kaboom. Sorry everyone for the bucket of water to the face. I'm 47 and I'm right there with you all. And you know what, other than those random days, when I wake up injured for no damn reason, getting old while riding this crazy ball of dirt is a lot of fun. Some days you'll eat the bear, and some days it will eat you. Just roll with it man. And thanks for the gold. You stop that. If that 70s show was rebooted today it would be set in 1997. If they wait a couple years the series could start just like the 70s version, with the characters going to see Star Wars. Real headlines trying to outdo the onion. That's never going to happen. The onion headline about the president causing a controversy by drawing on a map with a sharpie still cracks me up. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. Papadon is going to make everything okay. I mean, he scared the hurricane from approaching Alabama. Right? That's why it turned north, and totally didn't even head in the direction of the Gulf. Right? Well, duh. If you threaten a hurricane with an oak, what's a hurricane to do? Just be the big man and let it slide. Go pound some other nations slash islands. My favorite is still marriage Joanna Rover doses kill 37 in Colorado on first day of legalization. That got shared all over my social media for like the whole year. My mom shared this, and she was adamant that it was true. She wouldn't even read the front page of the website which says it's satire. My generation is going to be known for wanting to die, and mems guess we can replace generation for decade. We're the doomer generation, not the millennials. Or maybe that's Gen Z IDK, it's all a mess right now. Doomer generation lmao. Boomers to doomers to zoomers. The meme renaissance. Chapter 7. Memes were the quintessential millennial mode of expression, 
akin to the hieroglyphics of Egypt and the cuneiform tablets of summer. Early 21st century internet savants populated their Facebook feeds with fan favorites such as Lolgats and Velociraptor. As the trend caught on, memes diversified and developed, getting adopted by such institutions as politics, academia, and postmodern avant-garde expressionism. As memes became more sophisticated, so too did their influence over society. The charged political landscape ignited a trend of weaponizing them for political use, culminating into the bloody meme wars of 2028. At the rate memes are evolving, the meme wars will begin why sooner than 2028. Try like three years ago. Memes are already a form of political warfare at this point. Begun. The meme wars have. People are gonna reminisce about how good the 2010s were. They may not seem good now, but just wait to see what the 20s have in store for you. Oh no. Cool underscore aid underscore man point png. Oh crap. Honestly, this happens with anything that happened 20 years ago. I can find forums from the 2000s saying that the 2000s suck just for a decade later for them to miss it so much. Nostalgia is just a stupid fad. When the 2030s roll around and people are nostalgic for the 2010s I'll just laugh in their faces. Anytime I get nostalgic over the zeros, I remind myself of that time when I was 12 and unsure if my dad was alive or not on the 9th of November 2001. Then watching us invade a country over non-existent WMDs two years later. And then watching a lot of my friend's parents lose their jobs in 08. The zeros were an awful fucking time. Edit. Holy crap this blew up. Since many asked, my dad was okay. We are from NJ, but he used to commute to New York City. He actually called in sick that day, but back then not every kid had a cell phone and cell lines were down on 9 over 11 anyways. So I didn't know, until I got home from school, that he was fine. I feel horrible for not remembering the exact number, but I like 4 to 5 kids from my middle school lost a parent. Yeah. .90s nostalgia makes sense to me, because it was the only decade between the Cold War and the Forever War. It was just a relatively chill time in America. But the early zeros sucked at least as much as the last few years have. Pop culture was atrocious and the news depressing slash enraging as hell. Dude, the Forever War is a badass name for real. Is that what people are actually calling the current state of things? It's like sci-fi. In the 1000 year war. People will remember social media, but I have a very strong feeling nobody's going to give a shit about these influencers anymore in the future. No one does now. That's crazy that she couldn't even sell 36 t-shirts, but the end of the article kind of explains where she went wrong. Seems like she just didn't put much effort into it. A lot of them think their shit is gold and 2 million f-o-l-l-o-w-e-r-s equals a-l-l they need, but a minority of them know their followers and understand how to make a brand and market it properly. I'm following them for their bikini pics. Tbh if they're selling something, I'll usually skip those stories. Except when they're wearing a bikini, when I'd watch it in mute. Surprised advertisers didn't realize that. I saw an analysis of that situation, and that influencer is clearly a fake influencer who just purchased a ton of bots to follow them, so it's not surprising that that didn't convert into merch sales. The death of traditional media. Printed newspapers and periodicals, broadcast television and radio are fading. And while digital music way predates the 2010s, it took until this decade for pop stars to stop selling albums. They aren't tallying CD sales anymore, they're counting unique streams. Their death will be in the 20s. They were still huge in the 10s, but began losing their revenue and popularity. I feel the final nail will come sometime around the halfway point. I don't think radio is going anywhere anytime soon. So many people listen to it when driving and construction sites are filled with radios. I can walk from one end of site to the other and not miss a beat, because of how many people have radios out. 
in Canada at least. Looking forward to this thread being unearthed in 2029. I hope you're la doing better than us. 2029 seems like a hundred years away, but 2009 to now flew. I hope I'm done college by then and have a job or I'll be in some trouble lol. I wonder if there's an us credit thread about this same topic from 2009. The incredible rise of misinformation and irresponsible knee-jerk reaction choices on very serious topics. That's not new at all. Why do people think fake news and hysteria is a new phenomenon? It was only 15 years ago we went to war with Iraq because everyone uncritically believed the government and media when we were told Saddam was building nuclear weapons. For about a hundred years in American history, every few months some black guy or immigrant would be baselessly accused of a crime, and then an angry mob would come together to publicly execute him. 120 years ago, the so-called yellow journalists lied us into another war with Spain. Ick now how they say every new generation thinks they invented sex. Well this generation thinks lying and dishonesty are some kind of new phenomenon, as well as gullible and hysterical reactions to lies and dishonesty. It's not. It's nothing new. From a design slash aesthetic standpoint, minimalism slash flat design, mostly due to the rise of tablets and browsing the internet on mobile devices. Clean lines, simple colors like black, white, and gray. TV commercials. Early 2010s ads are backed by upbeat xylophone slash triangle slash whistling slash hand clapping music, or people break dancing or doing the worm to obnoxious dubstep music. The late 2010s have vivid colors and imagery, vapor wave style aesthetics, and loud over the top spikes people talking fast in the middle of the screen. Think Captain Obvious from the Hotels.com commercials or Terry Crews from the Old Spice commercials, entering a new golden age of automotive design. Almost every new car from the decade is elaborately styled. Car interiors with angular intricate dashboards, like the Ford Escape, Chevy Equinox or Hyundai Santa Fe. This might end in the 2020s as crash safety technology requires more new cars to look the same and car interiors will replace dashboards and gauges with touch screens. Thanks, Tesla. A move away from chain restaurants and the rise of food trucks and locally owned restaurants that all feature string lighting, outdoor tables with giant Jenga blocks, Edison bulbs, and a craft beer selection written on a chalkboard. All houses are painted in that greige color and have all white kitchens with that same white subway tile backsplash. There is probably a barn door, shiplap accent wall, and a fiddle leaf fig inside. In big cities, that is true. In smaller communities, chain restaurants are more prevalent than ever before. In southern Ontario, communities that had no Tim Hortons a decade ago, but had a locally owned mom and pop coffee shop or diner now have Tim Hortons. Brighton, Alderton, and Kamoka are just three of those towns. It's very hard to find locally owned businesses in smaller communities nowadays, at least in Canada. The horrific turn the Area 51 raid took resulting in hundreds dead and the unleashing of angry captive aliens upon the world to exact their revenge on humanity. Don't forget the military being defeated by swarms of Naruto runners, leading to new arms limitation treaties banning the use of the Naruto run in any armed conflict. They also banned anime as a result, which caused weebs to flood the streets of Washington, waifu body pillows in hand, and Shinzo aid to publicly cut all ties with the United States. No one could have predicted the butterfly effect of what ensued following the Area 51 raid. This will be in history books, if we survive that long under our new alien overlords on the bright side. The aliens disguised as humans finally revealed their identities as a result. Elon Musk was no surprise, but I think we can all agree no one was expecting Todd Howard to be one, opening up a lot of questions about the true nature of Skyrim. I'm getting my passport ready. Hope Japan welcomes me as a refugee of the Anim Wars. Hey you. You're finally awake. You were trying to take the direct flight to Japan. 
right. Walked right into that cavity search. Same as us, and that weeb over there. We've been at war for 18 fucking years. Yeah. Some kids who were born after 9 over 11 can enlist in the army now. We actually have one in my unit, and we are currently deployed. I just realized none of our kids, one of whom is 18, have lived in a country that was not at war. Holy fuck. Well it could be worse we could be having WW3. Wait it's standing right behind me isn't it? WW3 would take a resource disaster or Iran slash Israel fucking up really bad to happen. So I think we are good for at least another decade.